This is a special Earth Day presentation for the 50th anniversary of Earth Day from Catawba Science Center. I'm Bruce Bierbauer, the naturalist. 50 years ago tomorrow, I was a parks and recreation major at West Virginia University. A couple weeks before that, our main instructor and advisor had told the whole group of us that there would be no class on the 22nd of April, and we were excused from all of our other classes and were told that we would get counter present and 100 for the day because we were working with the very first Earth Day celebration ever and the first at West Virginia University. Since then, I've been involved in Earth Day in various ways, with Georgia State Parks, working in another museum, and in 1981, Another educator and I, when Catawba Science Center was in a big old brick house, not too far from where we are now, for the first major Earth Day celebration in North East Hickory. So, today, in celebration of Earth Day, we need to learn more about the rainforest, whether it be the Amazon rainforest, the other rainforest around the world, including up in the Pacific Northwest, and DuPont State Park in Western North Carolina is actually like a rainforest. It gets almost as much rain every year as the Pacific Northwest that everybody knows about. So today, we're gonna to be reading a book about the great Kapok tree and what is happening in our rainforest and what we need to do about it. The great Kapok tree was written as a tale of the Amazon rainforest by Lynn Cherry. And several years ago, Catawba Science Center, the local library, and Lenore Ryan co-joined to have Lynn Cherry come to Lenore Ryan Belk Centrum for a special event. So it gives me great honor and I'm proud to be part of this celebration. So the great Kapok tree, two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapok tree. He said, this one, and then he left. The smaller man took up the big ax that he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack! 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 The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop! 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 The man wiped sweat off of his face that ran down into his neck. Whack! Chop! Whack! Chop! Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great Kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and uh, the hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the great Kapok tree. He slithered down in the trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the big gash the ax had made in the tree. Then the snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor, this tree is the tree of miracles. It is my home where generators, generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A troop of monkeys scattered down from the canopy of the Kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping monkey, Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die. There will be nothing left to hold the earth in its place. When heavy rains come, the soils will be washed away and the forest will become a desert. A toucan, a macaw, and cock of the rock birds flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to the underbrush. 
and soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. A bright young tree frog crawled down the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in his the man's ear, Senor, ruined forests mean ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great K-pot tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along the branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and the shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the Cape Park tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four tree, tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know that we, the animals and humans, need in order to live. You know what we need in order? Oxygen. And Senor, do you not know that trees produce oxygen? If you cut down the forest, you will destroy all that gives us life. Several anteaters climbed down the K-pot tree with their young clinging to the backs. The young striped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you're chopping down this tree with no thought of the future. And surely you know what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. He does not think of his own children, the big man who chop, tells you to chop down the tree. He must live in a world without trees. His children won't have anywhere to climb. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down the tree from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground, waddling ever so slowly over to the sleeping man. She spoke in her deep and lazy voice, Senor, how much is beauty worth? How can you live without it? If you destroyed the beauty of the rainforest, on what which you feast your eyes. A child from the Yanomomo tribe who lived in the forest knelt beside the sleeping man. He murmured in the man's ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around, all around him staring were the creatures who depended on the kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The man looked around, and he looked up and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arms as though to strike the tree. Suddenly, he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated. Then he dropped the axe and walked out of the forest. He saved at least part of the rainforest. And even today, many rainforests around the world are being cut for trees. Thank you very much. We hope to see you all again soon.